Hello, one and all. We are back to Disco Elysium. And I've got my cup of coffee next to me. I'm really excited for another crazy day. Um, someone mentioned that I missed talking to the man in the sunglasses. Uh, I thought I did by talking to the woman. I thought I was kind of talking to both of them. And they didn't want to talk to me yet. But I guess I could talk to him separately. And before we do that, I think I'd like to dress a little bit more professionally because we're not looking that professional. I mean, we're a superstar, but we don't want to make them feel bad about their policing skills. Let's just look more like a police officer. So we're going to put on the dress shirt. We're going to put on the patrol cloak. We're going to put on the regular black jeans because these are the most professional pants I have. Slightly more professional than the cum soaked, uh, yearning cum soaked one. We're probably going to, we're going to get rid of the bag. And I think we're going to go with... Go up the flip up. No, I want I want good authority. Let's go with the neat office shades. Okay. We'll roll with this for a little while. Let's go talk to him. I'm not taking the boots off. You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. Okay. You look like shit, asshole. <laughs> I don't look like shit. I know, it's intentional. Last couple of days have been rough. Looks don't matter, it's what's on the inside that does. Never gonna get this case solved. <laughs> he, I don't, he kind of looks like us, doesn't he? Except if like we were wearing a wig. And then shave the mutton chops. Maybe lose a few pounds? Huh. I think we do care about how we look, right? We're always changing our clothes. I don't look like shit. Judith, back me up here. Turns the woman next to him. You do look... It looks like it's been a tough week for him. Now, what do you want? His tone is impatient. There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A similar but different face. The suit, the sunglasses, the haircut. He's famous. That's how you know his face. Okay, so we've got Kim, who is this guy? Are you famous or something? We've got to check. Something strange about this guy. Figure it out. Got some questions for you. I'm a cop. <laughs> See you around. Let's do the check right away. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. It's because he's from our precinct? Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? Another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? 69! He seems to be observing you through the reflective glass of his eyewear. There's no reply. Perhaps repeat it? 69? Hello? Repeating it gets no reaction <laughs> from the man with the sunglasses. Suddenly, the world is very quiet. Oh, man. Even the howling wind outside sounds a bit embarrassed. It was... Wait, were we 41st or 57th? Oh shit, I don't remember now. <laughs> 41st? Okay, okay, that's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. Gives you a long, meaningful, meaningful look and adds. Somewhere good. Um, are you famous or something? Not as famous as you, Superstar. He says without the slightest hit of irony. Fine. I knew it, Kim. I knew I was a superstar. It's happening. My hard work is paying off. I'm becoming famous. Oh, yes, you are. And you've worked really, really hard, haven't you? I'm detecting some sarcasm. Jean is obviously suffering. The woman stops mid-sentence. Okay, superstar. Talk to me. What do you want? You want a pat on the back? The man with sunglasses looks at her, then back at you. 
Let's talk uh, more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Weird. Oh, the hypothetical 4-1. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. Is the dialogue broken? He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. Um, do you have a crime to solve? Broke it again. Oh, no. No, no. You see, I enjoy watching other, better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing your work, or you work. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. It's not helping because now you're making me do all the voice acting. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Like partners in crime or? You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. You seem like a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. Kim's cooler than you. <laughs> Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. You seem like a bit of a drag, no offense, but I could do better. None taken, my friend. None taken. Let's be honest. There's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. That's, uh, that makes sense. And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. Anyone else would just slow you down. He nods eagerly along. Who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but police officers. The man pauses for dramatic effect. I don't like this guy. Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys and and get this and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. I wait till at least 230. Just some regular barring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far out son of Lung. Who is this far out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. He winks at you sarcastically. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I say, it's just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. No, I, I mean... I know that I'm a poli police officer. Maybe. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by this sunglassed man. <sighs> could deal with this, loser. Okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. I can't imagine it anymore. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. She said, I don't know. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy. They're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. I got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like? Hmm. Like a megastar? Yes, a superstar cop. Of course. This again. Hyperstellar law official achievement. <laughs> he didn't answer your question. Now, will you answer some questions for me? No. Oh, he says calmly that they just keep staring at you. Don't you... Don't you have to? No, he doesn't. If I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. He doesn't look amused. If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things? Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. There's like this, there's like this little puff sound before his dialogue breaks. Like, like he's farting. <laughs> Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. He nods the lighter tone. Hear that? 
He wants you to say things. Say one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, why am I even telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? It's an odd look. Who knows why we do the things we do? Somehow, bouncing those ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming. Like you've done it before. Okay, that's cool. We got healed. Oh my god, there's more. He looks at I you in disbelief. More. What is it? Let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? Let's do the old thing over again. We're not wasting time. There is no time. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, why am I even telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? Gives you an odd look. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Okay, then see you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Wait, your voice, I recognize it. Oh really? I wonder where. I lost my badge recently. When I called in to report it missing, you were there. That's the where you remember me from? Let's see. Yes, I have. I haven't seen you before. Maybe. Hmm, I have a bit of. Maybe. Okay, then. It's probably a coincidence. People sound alike. Goodbye. Okay. The man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? Um. Guess it was kind of weird, yes. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. <laughs> what is... Don't just talk to him again. Again? I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he really is having trouble believing this shit. Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Okay. Okay. Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, then. See you around. <gasps> I leveled up. Sweet. Oh, 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 oh. Rhetoric? Is that what I needed? For those fools? Might be able to take care of that right now. Oh, yeah. Send victims wide to processing. We still have to do that. Victims tattoos. Ask another about the tattoos possible meaning. All we have is Joyce to ask so far. Sunday night. Oh, yeah. Uh, check. We have to check this. Rhetoric godly. Let's do it. Practice the art of persuasion. Enjoy rigorous intellectual discourse. I didn't hit accept. Oh, I guess it accepts it anyways. Cargo container door as well. Gaston Martin. Ceiling. They've all opened up. Okay, let's go talk to Hardy again. We're still on this. Uh... Okay, I got to get out of this dumbass outfit, though. We're still on the trail of this. Shades. Oh, man, I shouldn't have taken the shades off. 
It feels too good. Okay, where's my where's my bag? Uh, da -da -da. yeah, I think we're good. Back in action. Let's go, Titus. It's you again. What is it? Takes this time to come over. You're being manipulated. Convinced oh. that this is being manipulated. Bad idea. Bringing her up will do no good. You should know by now. Titus will never falter. One of his boys will. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez. Their district. Their responsibility. That's it then. Case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? Then it reads his brow. He'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Wait. Kill you because they don't like you? All because... Okay. Because of some chick. Because you're a foreigner. Because you work for the wrong people. Because they like killing. Because of some chick. Bring that up one more time. And you won't get to write that report. A wince. It's involuntary. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right? Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the wild north. They just hang you like in the Dark Ages. Make a display of your corpse. Or we could uh, pick... They club you from behind, string you up, and go back to drinking. It's cool, guys. You drag them out back, light their corpses on fire, and piss on them. You don't care. Um... They club you from behind, string you up, and go back to drinking. It wasn't that. It wasn't... We didn't hit him, okay? We're getting there. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. I don't remember this guy talking to us much before. Um, the old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Steal yourself. Push on. Just ignore Theo. Turn to Angus. Or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him for no fucking reason? Hmm. What happens if I keep talking? You gonna kill me too? In this bar for nothing? We're gonna turn to Angus. We didn't kill him. We didn't... Even hang him. He was dead when... <sighs> Shut up, Angus. He was dead before you hanged him? Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Uh, the little guy hits Angus on the back of the head. A loud slap. That's my slap. Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. The room falls quiet. So quiet, you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Did she did 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 class class J uh kill him? Fine. I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. She walks off without looking back. Or what class just happened between these two? You're in. He's all yours. Questions. <laughs> Can't we did it? <laughs> the lieutenant gives a smile. Only you can see. So you didn't kill him. He was already dead? He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. What was it? We're not sure. Probably a bullet. The wound was difficult to see. So there was a wound. 
You should try looking for it one more time before you send the body away. Well, I did shoot him in the stomach or so, whatever. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Because the girls asked us to. Girls plural? There's another girl? Two of them? Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Noted. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for 10 years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. He turns back to you. So what happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. Uh, fucking dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. So that's why the window was replaced. He means they'd been fucking. Tibbs patched the window. And the corpse. We hanged. Who's Tibbs? The eighth Hardy? Yeah. He's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Right now, he's grateful he hasn't gotten his brother into this mess. If Class J didn't kill him, why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girl in some shit of her own. Well, I didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? The can't show up on police radar kind. There were people after her. From the old, old world. Where she came from. These people, who are they? They're powerful. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. The moral intern, that's, um... It's for the Sunday friend. I can't remember his, his actual name was. Uh, that's who he was working for, right? That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. <laughs> guess that's why we belong. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. Uh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hmm. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot meant. Oh, it's Klausia, right. it was meant for her. Someone, someone mentioned that. It's more of like a uh sound than an A. But I feel like they've been pronouncing it with an, an A. That's why I've been pronouncing it that way. Class, class J. Uh, okay. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. And you had ideas about his past too. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. He pauses to think. Wasn't there two other mercs with him? Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. Whose idea was to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. Earlier you said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. 
had sent a good message. Hmm. It's her, isn't it? The missing eighth Hardy. That's the other girl? The big guy turns to Glenn, who's about to say something. The blonde shuts his mouth before a word escapes. I'll say it again. All the Hardy boys are right here, cop. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy boys. You don't know her anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. Understood. Can you tell me anything about her name, current location? You're going to stonewall me if I ask more about her, aren't you? <laughs> Glad you understand that. I'm sorry I made you guys fight. Me too. Ah, I feel like me, Titus, and, and us, we, we have an understanding now. Thank you for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her for the last time. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. Grabs his beer and swirls it in his hand, then thinks of something. She... Clausia came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... Still, after all this headache... But you would still prefer it if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. Huh. Interesting character, Titus. We'll take that into account. Lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket. He turns to leave. Wow, this just totally changed the, the direction that I was going to be going in. Let's go talk to her again, then. So he said, he ended up saying class, class, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, so I'll just continue to do it randomly. How about if I just call her Classy? It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. We still don't have that. Maybe for later. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. You don't look surprised. You're expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. Damn right. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. She winces. This is good. Clear the air first between you two. Then move on to questions. Is it? Something is off here. Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. Hmm, volition or rhetoric? What exactly is volition again? What do we want to trust? Hold yourself together, keep your morale up. Sane people, well-adjusted cops, the non -sus That doesn't sound like us. We're not well-adjusted. We're going with rhetoric. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. Is she implying the Hardy Boys are the law? Um. Hardy Boys are not the law. We are. I know that. But the people around here, they don't see it that way. And if I am to stay here, I need to get along with them. That's cool. I'm satisfied with this explanation. I am not. There is more here, miss. You're right. There's more. M -m -m more You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral enter. Yeah. She reaches for a new cigarette. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the moral intern? What's the RCM's involvement with the moral intern got to do with this? The RCM isn't the lapdog of the moral intern. You don't have to worry. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She lights a cigarette. What's going on? What did you do? Just business. 
but bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me.